Hey guys, Jackson here, back with another video. Spoiler warning for the latest episode of The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 4, and The Bad Batch Season 2, Episode 14. Star Wars Wednesdays returned to form this week with two solid episodes of Star Wars content for us. And instead of reviewing the episode or recapping this week, I thought I'd share my top 5 takeaways from this week's Star Wars episodes. Number 1. Crosshair episodes continue to be the best episodes of The Bad Batch. Whenever the Bad Batch focuses on Crosshair and the Empire, I know we're going to be in for a treat. In fact, I can't even recall a bad episode or even an average Crosshair episode. Like I said in a video many moons back, Crosshair-centric episodes are the best Bad Batch content we get, and possibly some of the best Star Wars content outright. It's the finale next week, and will Crosshair live? Will he die? Will he be experimented on? Will he become a death trooper? Who knows, and I'm excited to find out. Number 2. Omega is a very quick learner, and possibly force sensitive? We know that Dr. Royce Hemlock is after Omega in order to get Nala Se to cooperate with the Empire's cloning project. But what if Omega is a force sensitive clone? I mean it would make sense based on what we've seen so far in the Bad Batch series, and as we know she is Nala Se's pride and joy. And this week she continued to show how quick a learner she is when showcasing her pilot skills with tech in their ship the Marauder. Granted Boba Fett was also piloting Slave 1 as a young buck, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Empire finds out that Omega is force sensitive, if or when she is cool. Number 3. Grogu needs to transition from puppet to CGI. Yeah this one's a bit controversial and I absolutely love Grogu and the puppet they use, but now we're seeing him walk more and engage in combat scenes, it just makes sense to go down the CGI pathway. Every time he flips I can't help but laugh, and as the show continues, I'm sure Grogu will start doing more, both from a force user perspective and as a foundling. I mean if Grogu ever ends up wielding the Darksaber, or his own lightsaber and channels his inner Yoda, it will look ridiculous. But I guess he's still a baby so maybe we'll never see him become that proficient in the show. Number 4. There's always a bigger fish. I love how this meme never seems to die. And in The Mandalorian this week, the large flying beast gets taken out by an even larger fish-like monster, and it had me laughing when I probably shouldn't have. As soon as the flying beast began to fall into the water, I literally muttered the line, there's always a bigger fish, and right on cue, it's eaten. It was nice to see the children of the watch essentially adopt the flying beast's free offspring, and as we know from previous shows and lore, Mandalorians love to mount and ride to different beasts, and I'm sure that'll be the case with their new winged members of the clan when they grow bigger. Heck, we might even see it in the show, in following seasons to come. Number 5. Misa Jar Jar Keller and Beck? Order 66 flashback. We finally found out how Grogu escaped the Jedi Temple during Order 66, and it was a relatively unknown character by the name of Keller and Beck. A Jedi Master who supervised and taught Padawans at the Jedi Temple, Keller and Beck was played by Amid Best, whom also played Jar Jar Binks in the prequel trilogy. To most people Keller will be a new character, but he has been seen before in the short-lived Star Wars web series called Star Wars Jedi Temple Challenge, a Wipeout-esque show for kids, which I'm sure has had a surge in views. It's great to see the actor back in Star Wars, and he's received a huge positive reaction from the fanbase. The real question here though is why does Grogu literally have an entourage of Jedi protecting him, when there's so many younglings in that temple that had no one to protect them? Is it because of his species and possible longevity, knowing he could be the best chance for the Jedi to survive and maybe one day thrive again in the next 500 plus years? Or is it simply that they were with him when the temple was attacked and nothing more? I still wonder if he's a direct descendant of Yoda, or Yaddle, or both of them. And furthermore, how is Kelleran bezies with Naboo folk? I'm sure we'll get this answer in the coming weeks with further flashbacks. It was fun seeing a Nubian ship again though. Ah, Nubian. I need parts for a J-Type 327 Nubian. Ah yes, Nubian! We have lots of that. Uh... Both The Bad Batch and Mandalorian were solid this week, and the final two episodes of The Bad Batch air next week. My money is on either Echo or Crosshair dying in the finale making the ultimate sacrifice play to save Omega and Clone Force 99. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about The Bad Batch and Mandalorian this week. Did you enjoy them both, or do you think The Mandalorian's a bit weak this season? 
and if you're new here and enjoyed the video then consider dropping it a like and subscribing to my channel. Also check out my new channel Jackson Plays for all my gaming streams and content. See you next time guys.